Welcome to this episode of the Dry Eye and Ocular Surface Disease section of the Clinical Podcast Series, brought to you by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation. Today's episode is Characteristics of Bacterial Community in Eyelashes of Patients with Demodex Blepharitis. My name is Caleb Abbott. I'm an optometrist and assistant professor at the University of Colorado uh, School of Medicine, and I'm joined with Dr. Sathi Mighty, who is the VP of Research at the Perryman Eye Institute. We're excited to have her join the podcast today and look forward to reviewing some really interesting data about bacterial colonization in our eyelashes and our Demodex blepharitis patients. So, Sathi, thank you for joining us today, and can you give the listeners an overview of what Demodex blepharitis is? Yes, thank you so much for having me. So yes, Demodex blepharitis, I think a lot of us are starting to learn more about it now with the release of the new drug by Tarsus. Um, but what Demodex is, is essentially a very underdiagnosed and undertreated type of blepharitis that's caused by infestation and overpopulation of the Demodex mite. So Demodex mites are a normal part of our microflora. We have them on our skin and our hair follicles. But in some patients, there's this imbalance where they start to cause disease processes. So both through direct causes by their own biting and regurgitating of light pieces and all this stuff, as well as some thinking that they may be a vector for certain bacterial um, types of colonies and may be contributing to the disruption of that, which is the focus of this paper. Fascinating. So how common are Demodex? For people not too familiar with the condition, it seems like it would be relatively rare. Yeah, it's actually much more common than we think. Um, you know, most various studies have shown that in sort of a normal clinic population, it's probably showing up around 55 to 58% of patients that we see, wow. which is probably more than <laughs> you think, and that it's increase, it actually increases as we age. So some studies have shown that in patients over 70, you know, almost 100% of patients have this condition. Wow. And so it's definitely out there. Uh-huh. So why should we be interested in the bacterial flora of our patients with demodex blepharitis? Yeah, you know, part of it is that there is some thinking that the changes in our bacterial communities caused by or contributed by Demodex may be contributing to the disease processes and the symptoms and signs that we're seeing. So, you know, we know with the ocular surface disease that keeping homeostasis of that system is very important. And that includes having a good balance with our normal microflora with the bacteria and everything, we want to keep that in balance. And when there is an imbalance in that system, it's going to cause things like infection, inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, we are still needing to learn quite a bit more about the bacterial communities. And historically, doing studies on that has just been really difficult, one in terms of like, okay, difficulties in culturing the bacteria and identifying them. So what this study did was actually collected samples from both patients with the Demodex blepharitis and those without. And instead of using just colony or culturing, um, they actually use DNA sequencing to identify the bacteria. I see. Um, so they're looking at patients with Demodex blepharitis and without, and essentially looking at which bacteria were present. So what did the study find? Yeah, so basically what they found is that there were, even though it's a small, small sample size, notable differences between the Demodex um, patients and those without Demodex. Um, and particularly, they found that there was a decrease in the diversity in the types of bacterial populations in the Demodex patients versus those without. So there definitely is you know, it's changing the balance of the bacteria in terms of what, speci what species we have and then whether we have more or less of certain species. So in particularly, one thing that they found was that there was an increase in actinobacteria in patients with Demodex, um, showing potentially that there's, you know, correlation there and also that potentially maybe treating the actinobacteria with some kind of antibiotic specific for that could impact, you know, the Demodex. And then they also found, interestingly, that a species called Burkholderia, 
was mm-hmm. actually decreased in the Demodex patients, you know, showing that potentially that has some kind of anti-mite potential or, you know, some aspect of it that is contributing to decrease in mite population. And so they actually did sort of a second part of the study where they cultured this Burkholderia bacteria, and then they collected some mites from actually some separate subjects. They collected 30 mites. And what they did was they fermented this Burkholderia bacteria into a solution, and they put 15 mites, you know, in that bacteria bacteria solution and 15 in a control. And they found that actually the the mites lived much um, fewer hours, I believe it was 40 hours versus 70 hours in the Burkhold area um, solution versus without. So it has been shown to decrease their lifespan. Um, and another study had actually found in 2013 that this bacteria did have potential to kill mites. So this is really interesting in that, you know, one, it could be potentially a treatment, you know, developed into a treatment for mites. It also just helps us understand, yes, there are real differences in the bacterial populations, and that could be contributing to our dis- disease processes and findings. So there's just so much more about Demodex blepharitis that you know, we're learning about. I think it's much more nuanced than just, yes, there's Demodex and no, there's not Demodex. It's really playing a role in all these other aspects of, you know, the homeostasis of our eyelids and our ocular surface. Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating. So on one end, we might have bacteria that are more associated with Demodex blepharitis. On the other hand, other bacteria may actually play a protective role against Demodex blepharitis. Um, So why do you think that this is clinically relevant for us as practitioners? And do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Yeah, I mean, it just highlights, I think, that we, that Demodex is a more complex issue probably than we think, um, and that these bacteria can play a role. It may help explain why, you know, certain patients have much worse symptoms than others. It could be related to their bacterial populations, you know, as we sort of know with issues with our gut microbiome, you know, maybe our, we need to be paying more attention to our eyelid microbiome as well. Um, and then just another highlighting the importance of paying attention to Demodex, you know, make sure in the slit lamp, you're having your patients look down and looking for those cholerets because this is still really underdiagnosed and we want to make sure we are treating patients with this condition. Awesome. That, that was a great summary. Special thanks to Dr. Sathi Mighty for joining us today on the clinical podcast series, and we'll see you at the next episode. Thank you.